bit of a different video this morning. It's going to be a review video on the new Thrustmaster TLCMs, the load side magnetics, new pedals from Thrustmaster that came out March 26th, I think it was. Um, I've had mine from that day. Um, I pre-ordered them February 10th. They came the day before the release date, so I was um, extra happy. Um, and here today we're going to be just talking about these pedals. Uh, I'm going to show you how to install them. Uh, how to use the calibration tool, how to put on the different springs um, and a bit of review of what I think, how they are after a month or so of using them. So without further ado, here they are. Some lovely looking pedals, quite heavy, 10 kilograms, 22 pounds um, for the Americans or whoever else is using that system. Um, it's made from a hard uh, kind of shell plastic um, with a aluminium base, um, very easy to clean, very easy to look after, very durable. Um, got the three pedals, as per standard, you clutch, throttle, and brake. The brakes are the only one with the load cell, obviously, as you can see on the back there. You got two hole, two holes in the back for your different cables. One's a USB straight into your PC, and the other is one straight into your wheel base. On the bottom, standard mounting platings for most rigs. Um, if you've got a custom rig, it comes with a plan, which I don't have here, because I don't need it. So that's upstairs with the box. Um, but that's just go over your plate. You can drill the holes you need, put it on, drill it in, screw it up, and uh, that's all sorted. So let's get into the pedals. So you've got a standard clutch here, standard throttle, and your brake. The clutch has got quite a significant um, tension on it, a bit more than the throttle actually. Um, I hardly use the clutch, so that's a bit of a, a, a no-go for me. With the throttle I've had to change kind of the calibration using the calibration tool and software, but I'll show you that later. I find it a bit light for my heavy right foot. Um, and the brake pedal has loads of customization options which I'll go through. It's got screws in so you can move the plates around, not a problem. Uh, especially if you're a bit of a rally game, you can move your brake pedal close if you do your heel toe. Um, it comes with different tension springs at the back. You can see there, this is what your standard standard get. This here, your standard get this. It comes with reds, whites, I don't know what the different tension are. It all is about trial and error. Put them on, see what you like, test, and you've got to test a lot. It's all about muscle memory low so it's not the same as your basic pedals that you get. Uh, not about the movement you've got to think, it's all about pressure. So muscle memory, you've got to do a few hundred laps, I suppose, to kind of get it into your head about what's good for you. Now, I like the default setting, uh, especially on the longer race. It's kind of, my leg's not really up to it, I suppose. Um, it's quite simple to change. What I did first, though, because um, I'm a bit forgetful, if you like me, take a picture of how it's all set up first, uh, just so you get all the washers and everything in the right place. And then it is as simple as, I'm kind of at the wrong height for this, but it is as simple as pushing down and taking off. And it all comes off in one unit. I'm going to keep it all on if I can. Because, uh, simple as just push down and take off, push down, take off. And two different springs on it. There's the instructions if you're using the higher tension screens, there's also different color coded washers. Um, which tell you what goes on what. Um, follow the instructions, really simple, nice and easy. Um, I mentioned the cables before. The USB 3.0 straight in um, is a better option if you're on PC. It puts more data to the cable, allowing for a more accurate uh, brake pressure for your whatever game you're playing, whatever simulation you're playing. Um, it also comes with another cable that goes straight into the wheelbase. Um, that's only, that's really should be using using that if you've got a console because they don't support the second controller um it's up to personal preference but i like the fact that i get a second controller with more data going through so we'll move on to the software so go straight to thrustmaster.com brings you up to their main home page there's a shop if you want to go buy the thrustmaster uh, they were really good the delivery was really good um, nice and easy process, PayPal or Visa Debit, etc. Uh, what you want to do for the software, you need to click 
just click support it'll take to the support page and then click on technical support which should then bring you to this page and what you need to do is click on racing wheels and find the pedals in this list there's the TLCMs this way you kind of if you haven't got the user manual or you need the template for the um, for the base that's where this is where you can find it and there's the user manual for the calibration software but I'm going to show you that now anyway so you need to click this drop down box which took me ages to find uh, there's your software there's your download button you need to click that and it will pop up to the left hand side here click on that install to your preference your PC wherever you want to install it and then it should bring up another window once you've installed it and I'll show you that now so you should have something that looks a bit like this the TM Sim pedals calibration tool version 2.15 or whatever it is now double click on that you'll see it comes up like this sometimes you've got the defender smart screen running um, just click more info um, and click run anyway so the device should be plugged in there we go so there you go that's the calibration tool here's your clutch brake and gas throttle Orange is your dead zones, uh, when it comes up the green are the raw values and then taken into the dead zones you'll get your final values which run alongside in these columns here. Down here you've got the brake force, um, you can move that around, um, I'll, I'll tell you what that means in a minute, it shows like this look. So there's your clutch, nice and simple, they don't re that doesn't really need calibrating and uh, there's no finesse in using the clutch. Uh, the throttle is the one I've calibrated the most, I suppose. Um, I was getting, it's a very light pedal. And so the initial dead zone, I need to put about 10. Um, because I was just finding as soon as I put the throttle on, especially in high adrenaline fueled moments, I was just putting too much on. Just a little bit. So it just takes a 10 value off until I get to about 50. And then it'll bring it back towards and then they catch each other up and the little dead zone at the top will be on 100% as you reach 96.9 on the throttle um, play around with that see what you think um, use my settings if you wish and have a go um, the brake is as simple as so that's me giving a good pressure on the brake I was finding it's initially set to 70 this brake force and I was finding I was getting about 50 and I had to really really strain really put extra pressure on maybe because I'm weak to get to that 60 mark 65 mark which is where I like to be on braking um, when I'm racing any more than that you're going to lock up the tyres especially on our racing and ACC so on a kind of like a high end sim um, and I had a little bit of um, dead zone because I was finding that sometimes especially in shoes and stuff I was resting my foot on the pedal and you just don't want that brake having any impact on especially on the straights you need that speed um, play around with it you'll see the um, as I move it up and down you'll see that brake force changes kind of the multiplier I suppose of how, what happens with the brake um, and you can have dead zones you can't have a top dead zone on the uh, on, on the brake pedal so when you want to finish all this uh, you can reset to factory if you want to go back and start again or you just click apply and when you click apply it tells you to save your settings please unplug the device which if you like me means it's at the back of your PC and it's a pain to get but you have to do it I understand why they do it it's kind of like an on off and um, you'll have to do that as well you'll have to if you want to, every time you change your pedal spring you will have to go into this software and do this again and it which is even more painful if you're on PC so it's one of my little bugbears that you have to do that and it has to calibrate this certain way but it's not a hard thing to do uh, load up this and it's done in two minutes so final thoughts from me um, I think I'm gonna give these an eight and a half out of ten uh, they're my first load cell pedals so uh, I haven't got much com to compare them to but I love them. I love them already. They've changed my driving completely. I'm enjoying my racing a lot more because I'm staying on the track a lot more. Um, my only kind of cons, I suppose, are the throttle. Um, it's just too light on that initial press. That's why I've had to put that big dead zone in at the beginning. But now I've done that, 
I find I'm not wheel spinning as much. So I've got a lot more control um, with my heavy right foot. The USB, plug in, plug in, pulling it out to save the settings. I get why they have to do that. It's part of the software. It's kind of like a turn them on and on, on and off, I suppose. Um, but I think there's better ways of, of doing that. Um, uh, pros, works with consoles if you've got Thrustmaster base as well as your PC. Uh, so over like a Fanatec base, um, you couldn't have these on a console with um, a Fanatec base and vice versa. You've got a Thrustmaster with Fanatec pedals. It's a great entry level, 170 quid I think I paid, 180 quid. Um, $200 I think, or 200 euros it's going to be for Europe and in America. Um, it's a great entry level price. I'm a bit of a, I'm a hobbyist, I'm not a professional. I don't have the sort of money to spend 700 quid on some hoops and belts. Um, even though I'd love to um, and I think the level that I'm driving at it won't make much of a difference anyway if I did spend £700 it'd be all the gear no idea so for me the perfect you could buy the Fanatec V3s um, if you like the black chrome stuff for the PC I think it's personal preference um, I like the Thrustmaster I think it looks great I think there's less to go wrong and it looks simple um, and the way to change that tension in the brake pedal um, it's perfect. I think that'll suit a lot of people with different strengths. Um, so it's my first review. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you agree or disagree, I'd like to hear from you. I've obviously only used these. So if you use something different, please tell me. Um, if I said anything wrong, please tell me. Um, I'm only only in this as a hobby. Just let you know my thoughts. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you're seeing. And I'll catch you in a, in a few races, catch you on our racing if you're on there. Cheers. See you in a bit.